Hi everyone, this is Lada from astrolada.com and I'm here to do your July 2018 horoscopes together with Mila, Mila Striman. Say hi Mila. She's been my source of strength because the July horoscopes 2018 and August, these are the two most extreme months of 2018. Guys, lives will be transformed. Fates will take a new direction. Changes on an epochal way because we have two huge eclipses happening. And we also are going to, hey Mila, and we have Mars retrograde and Mercury going retrograde. I would walk you through all of this. I just wanted you first to have some fun, see Mila to start on a positive tone and we will end also on a positive note talking about Jupiter going direct and how you can benefit from that but be prepared for one of the most intense exciting months possibly also the most difficult months July and August together. I'm just gonna drop Mila to my mom. Hey say bye Mila bye. Wish everyone luck during the eclipses. Wish them luck to have the best results possible. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. And why are these months, especially July and August, so crazy? Well, people who are yearning for a change, for a big change in their life, people that want to totally transform their thinking and certain areas of their lives, they might actually have a blast this month and consider it one of the most powerful and one of the most positive experiences of their life, but eclipses always bring some crisis of a, of a sort, you know. And eclipses, and I'm making the same intro for everyone, for all the 12 signs. I want you to listen to it because it gives us a lot of insights. And then I'll speak specifically how it affects each of the 12 signs. But before I start, I just wanted to tell you that on the 8th of July, we have a webinar with Nikola Stojanovic on what in astrology gives the richest people. Nikola Stojanovic is a favorite of many of you so i'm looking forward to have you on that webinar preceding the eclipses and the first eclipse is a solar eclipse in july and the 11th uh, which is caused together by rahu rahu is the north node of the sun and eclipses are about karmic events Things that you have like a contract about, uh, in pre, you know, even before you're born, the big events that happen in our life, the big transformations of consciousness, the big leaps to the next level. And sometimes, often it happens through crisis because only big transformation comes through crisis. This is the nature of humans. Very few humans are inspired towards change because everything is okay and they're inspired to make it even better or to grow spiritually. The solar eclipse is weaker though. The solar eclipse is weaker than the lunar eclipse that follows. But the whole July, I'll be more careful about starting things like buying properties or signing contracts or, you know, uh, because especially a few days before and after an eclipse, it's the light is hidden. The light of the sun or the moon are hidden. And it means that there is a lot of confusion. Uh, the the uh, eclipses act as portals for invisible forces to come and create chaos and out of this chaos, new beginnings and changes can build. But you don't want to make big decisions, especially when it comes to the second eclipse, the lunar eclipse, which is the strongest in 120 years eclipse. The lunar, the most strong lunar eclipse in 120 years uh, that is closest to Earth. Uh, and it's going to be seen in most of Africa, Europe, and uh, in Asia as well. Extremely powerful eclipse. I would advise you a week before this eclipse and a week after the July the 27th. And then there is another eclipse in August. This summer, there are three eclipses in a row, guys. Very karmic events are about to happen. And uh, very fated events. I mean, things that happen on eclipses are people getting pregnant, birth of babies, uh, uh, you know, things that... And, and usually within the month of the eclipse. You can be feel it a month before, a month after, sometimes even two months after. But this is when our lives turn around. And some eclipses take from us because they want to teach us about detachment. That will be the lunar eclipse. It will be about losing things, letting go of things. And some eclipses give us things so we can further incarnate and so we can fulfill certain desires that we have because the purpose of the eclipses is our spiritual and soul evolution. Uh, and the evolution of the soul happens by first, there are two ways that it happens. That our desires that we have are fulfilled so we realize that we've been chasing an illusion. For example, you really want to be rich or you really want to have that guy or you really want, you've all you wanted, always wanted was to have a child. All you always wanted was to have this business. And Raku eclipses, which is the first one, the solar eclipse, gives us those things. And once we have them, we realize that it's an illusion, that it does not 
uh, is did not fu fully create what happiness is for us. So we're still searching inside. But Rahu gives. So in Western astrology, we tend to like Rahu because it's a eclipse. Uh, 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 when Rahu is involved in an eclipse, we receive things, we get things. And usually, again, though, they're preceded by some crisis because a big change and big transformation always involves some kind of crisis. Uh, and sudden, it's usually very surprising when eclipses come, but usually it's something that you've had to do for a long time, but you've been postponing or you didn't have the willpower. And now uh, other sources, other powers take over and start acting through you. And, you know, like eclipses bring things to um, culmination, so to speak. And maybe you've wanted something for a long time and this Rahu eclipse now can give it to you, but it might be again preceded by some kind of crisis, but it will be some kind of new beginnings because solar eclipse is when the sun and the moon are together, creation of something new, female and male, polarities are joining together to create new life. But because of Rahu, which is considered a demonic influence, it happens through some kind of shakeup in our life. You know, and but this is when it, it's contracted. It's it's what had to happen. There were two eclipses on my moon in the last year and a half, and the moon is motherhood, and I got pregnant both times, uh, maybe a month before, a month after. But usually, the eclipses it doesn't mean it will happen on the 11th of July. It, it means that if something new comes into your life, it might come a month before or a couple of months after. But the eclipses are like those beacons that say that something fated is going to happen in your life. And as I said, the Rahu eclipse, the first one, brings something through crisis, sudden new beginnings, uh, transformations, because Rahu and Ketu that cause the eclipses, the south and lunar, the north and uh, south lunar nodes of the moon, the mythology about them is that they were uh, Nagas which is snakes, dragon. There were a dragon that was cut in two. And, uh, the, you know, the symbology of dragons is that they shed their skin and snakes as well for transformation. So the big thing to remember about eclipses is big transformations. And they're never easy. It means about the light is hidden for a little bit. So it's almost like <clears throat> you might feel like something like a metaphorical death of some sort, a death of, of a part of your life, a death of an old part of you, but so that again the sun or the moon can be reborn when the darkness of the eclipse is removed from them and because chaos ensues first of some sort before again the the king and the queen the sun and the moon can take reign over your life and make it run according to you know a kind of more predictable uh, and uh, uh, normal patterns but while around the eclipse a couple of months around i would say some of you would feel it already from june some would feel it into august as well but July is the most intense. There is this darkening. Uh, people like start to get confused or to change direction in their life. They get sudden changes and transformations are starting to happen. And while it's dark, there are a lot of fears. And we're like, what does the future hold? Rahu eclipses prepares for the future. They bring new karma. And again, it can bring a lot of fears. When I got pregnant both times, I was full of fears, you know. It's a crisis on the mentality, even if it gives you something. It's a crisis on your whole lifestyle, on your whole um, expectation for whatever you wanted for yourself. And then the, there's something new that comes that is fated that's totally going to change your life. So this rapid eclipse on the July the 11th will bring something like that. It gives things... Uh, it gives uh, transformations, but uh, through some kind of sudden crisis, uh, new karma is created, then strong passions. Rahu is the mouth of the dragon. The dragon has two parts, Rahu and Ketu. The mouth of the dragon is Rahu. It's insatiable. It's something that we want to grab from life more and more. So often, sometimes people can even fall in love around eclipses, and especially Rahu eclipses, in a crazy way that they lose their mind. And because of that, their whole life transforms and they can do something passionate and intense that's almost like eclipse of the mind. You know, the sun is our conscious ability to make conscious choices. Uh, and Rahu darkens that. The eclipse happens on the sun, so you kind of lose your mind over some with strong passions and stuff like that while the next eclipse july 27th lunar eclipse is um, as i said the strongest eclipse is going to be seen especially if you're in the path of the eclipse if you are able to see that eclipse your life will definitely be so strongly impacted but for the whole of the world i warn you quite an intense eclipse it's conjunct mars and mars is retrograde mars is a very violent star when it's retrograde it's much closer to earth so and ketu means past life when an eclipse 
involves Ketu, it's about past lifetimes or past karma. Something from the past and especially that creates a lot of frustration or angry reaction on us. So kind of a old slumbering karma of anger can come to the surface during that time, a week before or a whole month after that. I would say the whole month you know, uh, this is active, uh, and you can feel like strong, intense emotions, and also it has a square to Uranus, the eclipse, by the way, and Uranus and Mars ultimately want to give freedom and liberation to a person from something, they make you so angry about something, Mars especially retrograde, you're like, I can no longer tolerate that, there's so much like pent up fire that is starting like volcano to erupt, be careful not to erupt and lose your minds again, lose your heads, when the, when the moon is eclipsed, uh, the weeks before and after, we can do crazy stuff that we regret. I mean, the last time the moon was, uh, Mars was with Keto, um, there were quite some famous um, suicides of uh, Anthony Bourdain and Kate Spade on the exact day. So people can lose their mind, and this time is much more powerful because Mars is retrograde, so much closer to Earth, much more intense. The influences are way more karmic. It's bringing anger, pain, Mars is all those things, from the very bottom of your soul, from past lifetimes, from earlier periods in your life, something from the past, it rules the past, this kind of anger and this pain is going to erupt now on the surface, but the ultimate goal of Keto Eclipses is to release it, to release that anger, or to use that anger to detach yourself from something from the past that is no longer necessary in your life, so there will be powerful endings, Losing something, Ketu is about letting go of something, I don't know if you see it well here, but letting go of something, Ketu is about, is the tail of the dragon, while well, Rahu takes something, that's why we usually get something in life during Rahu eclipses, or around the months around it, in Ketu eclipses we let go of something, is the tail where you excrete you know, so where old karma, the baggage, we have, we have, we all carry a lot of baggage with us, and that's key to the karma, and we need to travel lightly on our path, uh, and when the baggage becomes too much, it's like we can't move forward, but we're so afraid to lose something, we're so afraid to lose a relationship, we're so afraid to lose a safety of some sort, we're so afraid of, to lose a job or whatever, and Ketu comes, and there is a Ketu eclipse, and says, enough, you know, yes, you've been thinking about that, but you haven't had the strength to do it now, you're letting it go, and there is no choice, power stronger than you take over, karmic powers, and you have to drop that baggage that you've been carrying with you from past lifetimes, or from past experiences, or something that is no longer necessary in your life, it, it can almost be severed, just like Ketu and Rahu, the head of the dragon and the tail was severed by the gods, because they tried to be immortal, you know, the same way something can, sometimes even literally, when there is an eclipse of Ketu on someone's ascendant, or something, of the body, there might be a part of the body that gets severed, that's very extreme cases, hopefully not for you, you know, you know, it's happening on my ascendant, I hope I don't come with one leg less or something by the end of that, but it's about letting go of certain chapter of your life, and it's going to happen in a violent way, or it's going to happen because Mars is our willpower, and it's going to happen because we get angry, or because we're like, okay, now I have much more stronger willpower to do that, and Uranus is also about cutting connections, and about changing something in a powerful way, uh, in a sudden way, uh, so this eclipse is really what I'm going to focus on a lot in those predictions, but ending about karma, so the positive thing of it is, yes, we can lose something, we have to change totally the direction of something, let go of something, but we can also release old karma, that is heavy baggage, we can also release, uh, complete something, we, we can, if we've been burdened with a karmic disease, or with a karmic um, uh, unhealthy obsession or something, we might finally be able to detach from it in some way, it's a big karmic conclusion, and for every person it's in a different area of their life, just be careful for very extreme emotional reactions, because the moon is our feelings, it's being eclipsed, it feels as if kind of, some people might become hysterical, panicky around that time, but remember this is a period of big alchemical transmutation that's happening in your subconscious, the layers of your karma are being rearranged, are being cleansed, are being, you know, uh, uh, kind of like gods and powers above us uh, rearranging those things for us, and it's fearful, it's scary, it can feel confusing, it can feel ex exhilarating for <laughs> some people, you know, it is rare, but for some people they can, and after after that, 
I guess even in August it continues, but we'll speak about that in the August videos. Uh, and so, yes, I just want you to remember, yes, it will be an intense month for every person. These things can be happening, those big transformations that the snakes, Rahu and Ketu, the eclipses want to create in our life. Uh, the, the hiding of the light from us, you know, you the basically the sun and the moon, our consciousness, our feelings and our consciousness, when those two are blocked and hidden by uh, the eclipses, which is what Rahu and Ketu, these are the dragons that swallow the sun or the moon, according to mythology, we lose, darkness happens, it's like a metaphorical death and the new rebirth of light comes again, the light of the sun or the moon. So our life comes up out of the darkness emerges after the eclipses on a new level, on a new direction. So big transformations, guys. Ultimately, it can be used for good people that have been craving for transformations for a long time. It might be now for them. And of course, it's very hard to predict how exactly eclipse will affect a person. Even if I have your chart specifically, I can say more, more uh, who exactly will be will feel it the most if you have a planet exactly on those degrees you know this one is at four degrees Aquarius so anything and this one is at 20 degrees uh, Cancer uh, but again everyone will be affected somehow they have those degrees somewhere in their horoscope certain area of their life and I'd like you to check your ascendant sign for this prediction and of course your sun sign but always the ascendant sign is more important and of course not everyone will have those big transformations they eclipses twice a year every year but still let let's see where you can go through big changes big transformations see how those eclipses are going to affect affect Sagittarius if you're Sagittarius rising sun or moon well the first one that gives you something but again, it might be preceded by some kind of crisis. Uh, in July the 11th, it's happening in Cancer, which is your eighth house, Sagittarius. So what does it mean? Well, they can be eight houses, other people's resources. And whether it's your husband or wife's income that comes from them or your mutual resources, the mutual bank account you have, or maybe the money that comes to you from your clients, or if you're working with client resources, well, something can happen there, some change. And uh, it can feel a bit stressful even for a moment, uh, but it's about helping you find out new resources, find new such resources which you can benefit from, from other people's resources. So maybe they can be like a change in the salary of your husband or your partner, or if you have a business with someone where you are kind of merged your resources and finances, there can be some kind of a situation that require, that is, that is de definitely about changes there. Uh, but even if it feels stressful now, it can eventually bring something because this eclipse, Rahu eclipse, gives you something. Uh, so even if you need to readjust something and change something in those mutual resources with partners, uh, eventually you can get something out of that. Like more Rahu that causes the eclipse is very uh, material planet. Uh, and you can ac acquire something through others following the eclipse up to six months following the eclipse so even if there's some initial shock and your partner says well uh, i have uh, you know i'm changing my job or whatever so my resources will change eventually this will bring to more resources that come to you through others so if you're in some battle uh, court battle where you're expecting money to come to you through another person this can this can create this situation the eclipse but eventually it can lead to you receiving more through those other people through other sources. Uh, on another level as well, the eighth house is the house of big life events like death and birth and like divorces and sudden separations and the big, those crisis situations that, mm, you know, that kind of turn the direction of our life around. And even if such crisis situation happens for you now, not for all Sagittarius, of course, but some of you might fall across such situation, well, it will eventually lead you to gain something. In extreme cases, for example, some, someone can pass away and this leaves you certain resources and you gain through that. Or might be the end, the, the, the death and the rebirth of something. Uh, or even if it's like stressful crisis situation or divorce, you can end up gaining through that thing. It's not the best way to gain through something. It's not the most 
pleasant way, but it leads to more gains and increases there. And basically, there will be more eclipses in Cancer for the next two years for you. So it's just the start of this process for you. Um, Sagittarius. It might not be immediately now in July that this happens. It might be the next Cancer solar eclipse that happens next summer, 2019, that you actually feel the effects more, but the process gradually starts from now, or kind of suddenly, <laughs> to be honest, eclipses bring these things suddenly, which can lead to some big turnaround in your life, 8th house, some big, sometimes of 8th house also rules crisis, that can actually lead you to gains that can lead you to benefiting in some way <laughs> materially talking about that strong passions can also appear and strong and the eighth house is the house of sex so with an eclipse in the eighth house sometimes i've seen that people um some passionate connection or sexual relationship can really intensify a new such one rahu brings something new something foreign can appear that is very sexually enticing the entangling that can almost lead to obsessions of some sort uh, but uh, that can lead to two people merging into one and entangling themselves in deeper desire with each other as well but new beginnings in anything connected to the eighth house eighth house is also inheritances insurances taxes there might be some mini crisis situation that happens there which pushes you to uh, an eighth house is a house of hidden resources. They can be an opportunity for some hidden resources to appear for you. And Rahu is not afraid to actually even use a little bit of illegal or taboo methods for that. Um, like putting away money somewhere in a hidden account or um, being some kind of tax, you know, gain of some sort or by private hidden resources of some sort. But again, I try to always advise people don't make big financial choices when there is an eclipse in the eighth house, at least a month, um, a week before and a couple of weeks after the eclipse itself until the energy is settled because you're not seeing clearly then there might be some information that is missing in some sort. And as I said, the mind is eclipsed and we're a little bit too rash or too passionate or too, we have too many uh, temptations there in some sort, you know, and uh, because of that, we might be a little bit more prone to make mistakes. But those themes will develop over the next six months after the eclipse for certain, and especially you start seeing the, the activation of those themes even a month before and the weeks immediately around the eclipse. Okay, then on another, the other eclipse, which is the more powerful one, the strongest in 120 years, lunar eclipse, happening on the July 27th, we usually feel it the month before and 40 days after that. And this is happening in your third house, Sagittarius, which is actually not a bad position for it, but it's about letting go of something. So an ending old karma, releasing something. And third house is your siblings, is your relatives. There might be the completion of some difficult karma, uh, uh, or difficult situation with the relatives so or with the sibling. There might be even separation from such people and letting them go from your life. Third house is workmates, playmates, schoolmates, people in your everyday environment that are somehow connected and that um, there might be completion and ending of your karmic interaction with them, of your karmic con contract that you have with them. So some kind of something around your social environment, immediate social environment can change, can transform in some big way, can come to an end. You might have to let go of such people, attachments to such people. Uh, third house is also communication, information, uh, anything to do with uh, writing, speaking, documents as well. Well, you might lose something there. So be careful, like, uh, in, when it comes to, you know, if you have laptops, computers, phones, um, any telecommunication devices, because it can, there can be some losses that happen because of this eclipse uh, breaking something, you know. And Mars energy is quite aggressive as well, so be careful. If you can ensure such kind of possessions, if you're ascending in Sagittarius, make sure you do. There can also be some communication problems that this eclipse brings. Uh, maybe something that you set in the past can come back and uh, maybe some angry communications can happen because of that and it has to be fixed uh, or it has to and has to be let go after that. Um, but also on another level, the third house is uh, 
transportation, traveling, short traveling, anything under one month or short travels like cars, buses. Be careful when you're driving as well because the eclipse eclipses the mind and the attention, you know, our ability to be present. And sometimes we can like, you might feel like road rage around the time or, you know, this is violent, angry energy of this eclipse. So um, if possible, if you cannot travel around two, three days before and after the eclipse, so you get safer, I would recommend that because of the third house of traveling, it's happening. Uh, and also third house is business and commercial transactions of any sorts, writing, speaking. On the positive level, you might be completing some writing project or something that you write, that you've been working with your hands, some craft or whatever. You might be completing it and releasing it, letting go of it. Uh, or some business commercial transaction you might be completing. Or unfortunately, there might be some losses through such activities as well. Um, okay, so... Yeah, these are the two eclipses and how they affect you. And uh, on a positive note, Jupiter, the planet that rules Sagittarius, Jupiter is you. It's been retrograde for the last few months. And now from the 10th of July, starting to move direct. So on many levels of your life, things will gradually start going according to your expectations. And it's like, universe starts helping you because the planet that rules you starts moving directly so there is a huge change in the direction of your life to move according to your expectations unless it regards those two themes of life where the eclipses are they can be surprises there but jupiter turning direct you start getting back in control again you start being able to navigate the ship of your <laughs> life in the direction that you want you start being more clear into the direction you want to go as well if you're trying to travel to faraway places jupiter rules in the 12th house it goes direct in the 12th house the 12th house is faraway places foreign countries traveling far away so if there were some delays or complications now they can start basically um dissolving themselves they can start resolving and you might be able finally to move or to travel somewhere far away if you're planning so yeah th that's what i see the month ahead to be it's interesting thankfully it does not directly hit sagittarius uh in you know in very important houses uh but still you know the it probably focus mostly that jupiter the planet that rules you is turning the red so things start moving in a different direction for you in the positive sense with more opportunities again starting to appear uh and results of actions uh, and efforts that you put before starting to give results so thank you so much and i'll see you next month